This video is for those who are going for the OSCP, OSEP, or PNPT, or if you just want to learn cybersecurity and also how offensive security works. This room is from Hack the Box, it's called DevOps, and DevOps is supposed to teach us how we can enumerate and find exploits in DevOps applications in this case. So let's jump in and see what this machine has to offer for us. All right, so first, what we're going to do is we're going to sign in to hack the box and start DevOps machine. This is a retired machine. And once we start it, we'll go to our Kali. I'll make sure that we start the VPN. And then after we start the P VPN, we need to be able to ping. Or if you're not using their own, your own Kali, you can use the hack the box Kali. But let's copy this IP and let's ping the machine. I believe that's the same one. Yep. And it's responding. So what I did is I created a folder in my machines, hack the box, DevOps. I like to be organized and in this case it's blank. Then I will run an nmap. Uh, in this case, let's just run nmap with SV and SC. SV will scan for service version. SC will use default scripts. Nothing too fancy here. Then let's, let's do an OA. OA will output all our formats in, to a file called nmap. I like to call this one initial because this is going to be only the top 1000 ports. VV is the boss and the boss is giving us the results in real time here. That way I can actually start working on this instead of waiting for the whole thing. But it looks like this was very quick. So we have port 22. Uh, we usually don't interrogate 22 unless if we get really desperate. Uh, so 5000 it is. And 5000 is a name of an application here. Let's look it up. We just want to cut to the chase here. Is this thing vulnerable? Here's a list of vulnerability. Uh, I see some write-ups here, but uh, I just want vulnerabilities. Okay. So let's look at a sneak. Anyway, let's visit this application. It's on port 5000. So let's get the IP address. Come here. Give it the IP address, call on 5000. And off we go. Oh, some outdated application. Uh, I don't know what this is. Under construction. This feed.py, which will become MVP for blood feeder application to do replace this with proper feed from dev. Okay, whatever this is here. Building data. Okay. None of these respond. So what do I do with this? I don't know anything about it. So... I'll open a new tab. Uh, let's use GoBuster. Probably use something like this. I'm going to be using medium.txt for the wait list. And I just want directories this time. We can use GoBuster for other things as well, but this time I just want directories. So let's go and buy some directories. This will definitely generate a ton of noise on the network. So if you're going to be doing this, please make sure that you are careful because you are spamming the entire network here. I see slash feed and also slash upload. Slash feed is the same thing, just rendered differently. I don't know. Yeah. So let's go to slash upload. All right. XML upload. This is a very classic hack the box thing. XML can be abused. If an application is taking an XML file, you can send it an XML that can be parsed and divulge information. So the fact that we're seeing this here, we are looking at an attack called XML external entity injection. And we can see it from what OASP here, they explain to us. So what are they saying? An XML external entity attack is a type of attack against an application that parses XML. So this looks like we're going in the right direction. This attack occurs when XML input containing a reference to an external entity is processed by weak configured XML parser. Okay, so is this doing the same thing? Uh, we have a couple ways here. Let's stop this because I think this should get us in. We can try to upload a file and see what happens, or we can send this to Burp Suite. So let me start Burp Suite. Maybe we'll try both. Maybe we'll just try one if one works. Uh, so I would start Burp Suite, just a regular one. I do have the Burp Suite Professional, but I'm not using that. And once Burp Suite is started, we will give this a go. All right. So now that we did that, let's take this, give it to the upload file. 
I have two forward slashes, but that's okay. Our web suite browser, there we go. Okay, so now that we have our web suite, let's check to see if we can get a simple XML payload. XXE payload. I think uh, payload all things has it. Here it is. This is very common. Like the number of Hexabox machines I've seen with this is ridiculous. Okay, so here we need a payload. So this is like a shopping cart. So we have a different options. Uh, this is for system file, get Etsy password. Let's try this one. Okay, so this time it's the same payload you can you can find, but this time we have the, the test. We want to make sure that we also get the author, the subject, just in case we're giving it more information here. And at the same time, we still want it to give us a file. Okay, so now coming back here, choose a file, rev.xml, select, upload. Oh, uh, we need to go to our proxy, off and on. Go back here. Oh, there it is. It's actually working. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Let's do this again. Turn off my intersection, interception. We're getting practice here. Continue to the site. Select. Here's my rev.xml. Select. And then come back to Burp Suite. Interception on. Upload. Here is my intercepted traffic. Send to repeater. And repeater. I just want to see what that looks like. All right. So we added the information here about the author and stuff. And here to tell us, like, okay, here is the information. So sometimes XML checkers want that information. So we added the author and stuff like that. And that was just test. Uh, the file path was home. Rosa deployment source. But here is the interesting thing. Looking at these users here, uh, we're looking at root. In this case, root does can sign in. We do have access to bin bash. Uh, then we look at other users here. That may be interesting. Rosa looks interesting. We also have Git. So that's good. That's part, probably part of the DevOps uh, part of the machine. Okay, so if we can read Etsy password and we know that there's a user called Rosa, we know the path to where a user might be. So let's try that. I'm going after this because they also have bin bash. That means that they might have things like bash history and SSH keys specifically. So instead of that file being as a password, I like it to be slash home slash then the name of the user slash dot SSH. This is a known path for SSH keys and one ID underscore RSA if the files are named like that. And then we send it and <laughs> we're in luck. So this was actually easier than I thought. Now we need to make sure that we take this and we make sure that this is formatted correctly and we hopefully we can sign in so we copy it nano rosa um underscore id dot rsa that's why i usually name my files if they contain keys and then here we need to remo remove the word author up there uh, hopefully the format is good for us and we don't have to deal with formatting this all right let's move an extra space control x y enter which mod this one needs to be 600 uh the permissions otherwise it won't work then ssh we need to say dash i the name of the user and that now tab yes. The only problem that might be, oh, never mind. We're in. I was going to say we might have an issue with our key if it wasn't formatted correctly. Uh, LS LA. We're looking for interesting files in here. Privilege escalation time. Bash history is being suppressed, so <laughs> does it matter? We are looking for, oh, RAM block feeder.sh. It's owned by us, so it's not doing anything. Here's user.txt, might as well. And give it to them. 
All right, so that was the correct flag. Next, we need to find the root flag. What are we missing here? I'm just looking before I started running win piece or lean piece. Oh, I saw git. I saw git. I saw git is if Rosa has done any git stuff. Uh, if they've done, there is a .git file somewhere on the system. Um, so we need to look further into their files to see what they have. So user.txt was in here. Here's a work file folder. We haven't looked into that. And hopefully this is where they're doing their git stuff. Because there is a GitLab in here or GitHub. Uh, Read.md. Okay, that, that's beginning to look like a git. Location, ls-la. There's a hidden .git file. Okay. Uh, and we also have this. So let's first read this file. What is it doing? Okay, bin search export flask app and then export there's a pin for something. Okay, and then they're installing it. I don't know what this is, but if I need a debug pin, that's what it is, I guess. Uh, and this is how they're running the app. Uh, let's get out of here. Yeah. Okay. I'm interested in the .git file here. CD dot git ls dot la so here is the files that are in that dot git ls dot la in branches okay so with this dot git here let's go and look for help of sec something like that like we need to attack all right hectrix has some help for us to dump a dot git folder from a URL, use git dumper. To inspect content, use git kraken. I think I've used git kraken before. Uh, Truffle walk searches through GitHub repository. Okay, we want git, git kraken. All right, so first we say um, git log to see the log of all the git stuff that happened on this machine. And we see that they are writing comments here, like they're setting a pin, they're setting a debugger, block feed, unicorn. Uh, here we have a commit of this ID. And it's talking about a key. So add key for initial integration. So what are they talking about? So this is probably like their SSH key so that they can integrate the system. So uh, with their machine. So I can say git show. And it will show me that key that they committed. So it looks like they tried to. So this is part of the commit history and they tried to clean it up in machines. Now we say nano root i think id rsa it has to be root who else will it be okay control x y enter ssh dash i root then root at our ip address all right let's see oh no oh oh i forgot something come on fail Schmod 600 for root. Now let's do it. All right. <laughs> that was easy, I guess. Um, Cat root dot text. So this is not the first time I've seen Git. Uh, this is like a fourth machine on Hack the Box alone where we have to extract information, secrets most of the time from Git. So hopefully you learned something here. And if you like to keep up learning like I'm doing here and just follow up with me, there's over 70,000 people who have subscribed to this channel. So please follow me, subscribe, and I hope to see you next time.